Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Camp Creek Church. It is so good to see you this morning. I thought it was going to be a really, 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 really rainy morning, and it's not. It's really, really sunny morning right now, anyway. A great time to come out and, and be here for church. So welcome to every one of you who could be here today. Welcome to those of you that are watching online as well. Thank you for joining us. It's good to be a part of what God is doing here this morning uh, at Camp Creek Church. A couple of things to kick, tick, to kick off with. I don't want to tick you off right at the beginning. <laughs> Uh, right. During the sermon, then it's God's responsibility, you know, to maybe kick you off, uh, uh, kick off with an announcement of something we're trying to do special for Sunshine. And since he's not here, and Marcia assured me he does not watch the online service, so <laughs> we are putting together a, 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 a frame picture that shows the church, the new you know, the old building that we've all renovated. It's a nice picture from the outside. It's pretty much the same picture that's on our Facebook page now. And that's in the middle of it. And then around it has a big border or mat for the church family to sign. And so we're getting that together just to present it to him. So after church today, if you have a moment and can pull away to sign that, that would be great. Right now it's in the church office. And it's just the, it's just the, the white mat that you're signing. Um, anyway, it's in the church office, but we need to move it over to the fellowship hall. So if I don't get a chance to do that, if somebody could move that into the fellowship hall. So after church, you could move over there and just write a little very, very short sentiment. Uh, don't write a long letter to Sunday. You can do that personally, but it won't all fit if we write too much. And then just sign your name. And I think it's going to be a really neat um, way to show that we love him and care about him and have a picture of the church and then signing by all the people who really are the church here. Don't, so. don't sign it too close to the edge. Don't forget it has to go back in the frame. So, right, um, and I marked that. Did I did. I dotted line the edge so that way your signature I'm won't sorry. go. If you go over the dotted line, sorry, uh, but <laughs> it's there to show you to where to sign. So yes, thank you. So anyway, we look forward to that and getting that done. So if you're able to just pop over to the hall, Real quick, after church, that would be great. So we, we look forward to doing that. Also, as we kick off, you know, as we, we celebrate, you know, as a church family, we, we celebrate, we, we rejoice with those who rejoice, we mourn with those that mourn. And I believe that's something we need to do as a church family always. That's part of our, our life and all of that. And so I want to celebrate today with the Porter family. Caleb, could you come up? And you can bring your parents and your sister if you want. I mean, <laughs> Caleb, give him a hand this morning. Caleb has graduated with his degree, graduated from Lane solo this morning. That's okay. You didn't want to come. That's okay. That's okay. Anyway, we, uh, we have just enjoyed seeing Caleb grow up through the years here at Camp Creek Church. And he did a season over at Lane Community College. Let me get you the mic so we can hear what you have to say. But you did receive your degrees recently from Lane. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I received degrees from Lane. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one in general studies, one of arts, and then the, the bigger one was a transfer degree for business. Um, I don't really know what I'm going to do with them yet, but I have them. I reached that finish line. I'm excited to see what the next finish line will be, whether that's going back to school at some point. Um, until then, I'm enjoying a break. Uh, and then I'm still working at Target. And then one of these days, I'll see if there's another job that God wants me to go to. But until then, I'm just enjoying time there. Yeah. And so, yeah, just <laughs> enjoying life as it comes now. Good, good, excellent. Well, we want to say congratulations to you as a church family and just a card of congratulations. And I want to uh, also just pray for Caleb that he, God does give you that direction of what your next steps are going to be. Will you join me as we lift him up this morning? Father, we thank you so much for Caleb. We thank you for his family being a part of our church family for many years. And we would ask your blessing upon him. We thank you for the accomplishments now from graduating at Lane with these degrees. And then uh, the next steps are in your hands for him. I pray you'll give him direction exactly where he needs to be and what he needs to be doing. But Lord, thank you that he's having a good time of just a little bit of rest and enjoying the season that he's in right now. So we just commit him to you and we thank you for Caleb and pray your blessing upon him as he continues to serve you and walk with you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Let's give him another hand, and congratulations to you. You're welcome, Caleb. It is good to celebrate together. It's good to rejoice together. It's good to pray together. And we do want to pray this morning as we come together and remember our village missionaries that we're uh, praying for. We had a nice time with our village missions district representative, Mark Kennedy, who was with us for our board meeting this last week and, and so forth. And things are, are going well with the mission and the church is in the mission and so we praise the lord for that we're praying for mark and debbie lug they serve the lord down in california at bowman california and we just want to lift them up today we want to lift up our services today as well and praise the lord for uh, all he's going to do in this place this morning will you pray with me today father we do rejoice in your goodness to us again we are so grateful to be able to celebrate like with caleb and his family celebrate accomplishments that happen within our church and we know too our hearts go out to those that, that suffer loss lord and and we know that not every day is a party even for christians there are lots of times of trauma and discouragement and so lord your word tells us that we we mourn with those who are going through those difficult days and even in our midst today there could be some doing that even watching online that are having difficulty today and so we do ask for your presence and your peace to be a part of their lives and lord as we come together this morning we are grateful for this fellowship of believers at camp creek church we're grateful for those who are here today in person we're grateful for those who join us on our online service as well and so lord we would ask today your just your blessing upon all that we're doing here today and we are grateful for village missions serving in these rural parts of our nation and the nation of Canada. And we lift, lift up Mark and Debbie Lug today and the Bowman Community Church. Lord, they live in an area where there's a, quite a gated community, many gates on the homes and, and just really almost a signal that uh, they don't want any visitors sometimes. And so they are trying to reach out to the folks, the neighbors in their community. And I pray that you'd give them not just open doors, but apparently open gates to be able to get in, to visit, to encourage, to invite, and that the people in the community, even if their gates are closed, would somehow realize the love that you have for them through this church family. Pray for the contact and the connection that they want to have with their neighbors uh, individually and also corporately. We pray for their children's programs to help them connect with families in the community. And they ask us to pray for an awakening and renewal and revival in their church family and in their community. So we lift up Mark and Debbie to you and pray your blessing upon their service to you in this particular place in California. And Father, now thank you for the opportunity to be here this morning. We give you praise and glory as we come to this time of, of worship where we can focus our hearts and, and even our lungs as we sing praises to you. So Lord, just come and meet us right where we are today. Lord, you know every heart here, uh, you know where we're rejoicing, you know where we're mourning. And so, Lord, we ask that you come and meet us where we are, touch our hearts this morning, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come together today, we are celebrating salvation. We're working our way toward the ending of our armor of God. Maybe you noticed we had some more pieces of uh, items that got shared with me up here on the pulpit today. A wonderful, precious moment replica of the soldier in the armor of God and today we come down and we talk about a couple of different pieces of that armor but right now I want to focus on that salvation that God has given us the salvation that you and I enjoy through Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross and realizing that though Jesus died on that cross for us he went there uh, for you and for me and, and died almost you would think even servant-like or just as a, as a nobody yet when he took that position he was still the king of kings he was the lord of lords and so we want to exalt him today so i ask you to join me as we stand together and just give your hearts over to the lord as you worship him this it's so morning. good to be here together today may you be encouraged as we sing together as we worship god our king of kings Fill the law and prophets to a 
stone was proved for good, and the Lamb had conquered death, and the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all. Creation, I sing praise to 
presence today. May that be true in our hearts. May we honor you, our King of Kings. We ask you, Lord, to lead us now. Fill us with your spirit. Work in our hearts, Lord, and speak to us through the songs, through the prayers, through your word now, Lord, as we hear from you. We open our hearts to you now. In your name we pray. Amen. So we invite you to be seated as we do here our scripture reading. All praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purify gold though your faith is far more precious than gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory on the honor of the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you do not see him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice in the glorious, inexpressible joy the reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you join me as we pray together this morning? Father, we thank you for your word to us, and we thank you for the salvation of our souls today. Lord, that you have purchased our salvation with such a great cost, the, son, the life of your Son, the Lord Jesus. And so this morning, as we, as we come before you in prayer, we are so grateful for all that you have done for us. We're grateful this morning for who you are, Lord, and that you care about us. And so as we consider our salvation today, we are, we are thankful that you have provided that for everyone who will receive it. And Lord, as we think of our salvation, we just think of the, of the tremendous cost that your son, the Lord Jesus, paid for us to be saved. Lord, we thank you that we cannot do it on our own, and we have to trust in your Son to bring that about. So, Lord, we do praise you for the salvation that you have given us today. And I, and I think in that salvation, we see so many things that play out into our lives every day, Lord. We, we see a power that we can live by because we are saved. We, we know there's an assurance in knowing that we are, uh, we are purchased with this price and that we have our home in heaven secured for us, and we can live with that in mind. We, we like to, Lord, that we have a great hope because of what you have done for us on the cross. And we're grateful for that hope today. And Lord, I pray each one of us here has received that hope by receiving Jesus Christ. And so Lord, today we ask that as we leave this place a little later on and go out into the world around us that that amazing hope that you have given us would shine through our lives because indeed it comes from you and your son the lord jesus and it's in his name that we pray amen <laughs> Yeah. 
Christ be praised, I have victory. There is a light, salvation's flame, Christ undefeated, trampled the grave. Thank you for that reminder from our team in that song that hope does have a name and he is Jesus. Well, we have junior church this morning. Who's going to junior church this morning? Oh, yeah. We can do that. Yeah. Yes. Let me pray for Jerry then, Bob. You bet. You bet. Father, we do come to you today and lift up uh, Jerry and Judy. We knew Jerry had the surgery recently and then had a little bit of setback after being with us Sunday morning last week. And so, Lord, we want to lift up Jerry to you right now. Father, we want to pray for strength for him, for healing for his body, and just for a full recovery from his recent surgery. And we pray for Judy, too, as she looks after him and cares for him, Lord, that you will strengthen them both and assure them of our love and your love for them. And we ask this, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So who's going to junior church? And I like Bob raised his hand. You know, I thought he was going to junior church is what I thought he had going. If, if you're going to junior church, can you come up here first? Can you come up here first? Come up with me right up here first because ah, I'm going to give Debbie a, you know, a 30-second break from having you. Right up here. Right up here. There, yeah, this is great, right here. I want to pray for you this morning. Come on, Livy, right up here. What a nice group we have this morning, huh? I want us to lift them up in prayer, and I love how you often will just 
raise your hand toward them as if, you know, I'm agreeing with these prayers. So let's pray for these dear young ones this morning as they go off uh, to learn more about our Lord. Father, I thank you for each one of these young people here today. I thank you for the families that are, they represent. And Lord, I pray your blessing upon them as they, they go forth now with, with Debbie and they're going to just learn more of you and that, Lord, they would just take in your love and grace. We are so grateful that they are part of our church. They're here as the family of God with us. Bless them today and just powerfully use them for your glory, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we give them a hand as they go out and have a great time in junior church today? That's awesome. Well, it's good to be with all of you today. Are you ready for some chilly weather? At least that's what they're saying. This week's supposed to be kind of cold, so we're going to see what, what happens when uh, the, the days here roll around. Ready for spring? We just had spring, didn't you? Where were you? You know, this last week we had, that was spring. Uh, yes. So I have an armor bearer here. I appreciate those who brought that, whoever shared that with me today. And then I also see a mug that I have here this morning, and it says this on it. <clears throat> Pastor, because hardcore devil-stomping ninja isn't an official job title. Okay, I love that. That is great. That explains my wife, my, why my back hurts sometimes, maybe. Is that what it is? Thank you. That is awesome. And yeah, we are in a spiritual battle, you know? And my question for you as we begin this morning is, how are you doing at standing strong these days? How are you doing at standing strong? It can certainly be a challenge uh, sometimes to, to stand strong with all the pressures that mount in our lives. There's pressures like family. You know, there are families are tremendous support. The family unit is something God designed and desired to be a part of all of our lives. But still, there's the pressure that can come with, with family and the situations that happen sometimes in our family. Sometimes there's tension and other things that go on. There's tragedies, there's circumstances and so forth that come about that make it hard. And there's work. There's work as well that we uh, all deal with. My wife works. I say she works, so somebody has to do it, you know. Um, but work can have its measure of difficulty. It is, I believe, a joy to work. I believe it is a God-given privilege that he has given us to be able to work. I believe he's created us to do things. And as we do work, we have great joy in that. But there are also the tensions and struggles that can come. There's school. And we know, you know, with everything going on in our world today, schools look different. It's been hard for so many teachers, staff, and students in all of that's going on. It's, it's hard. It's hard to stand strong and tall in the pressures that are around us in our school situations. Continue to remember our, our schools and our teachers and all that are involved students in the, the, some of the craziness that we have in our world today. And then that brings us to the last one. There's, you could add a lot more. But our current culture, we have a current culture right now that has things that make it kind of difficult. We, there's so much going on. There's so many voices out there. Who do you listen to? Do you just shut them all off? You know, you feel like that sometimes. Just turn it off. You know, I don't want to hear that. But we live in the world, though we're not of the world. So we are, we are exposed to our current culture. And I believe in our current culture, we need to be a light. But sometimes with these, these items in our lives, it's hard to stand strong. Our posture may get a bit stooped, and our footing may become a bit unsure. Our current series is meant to aid us in being able to stand tall and strong in a world, in a world that uh, threatens to undo us at times. We have been looking at the Apostle Paul's teaching in the book of Ephesians, and we've been learning how we can do this, stand strong in the Lord. And from the get-go, I've been trying to make it very clear that the idea of standing strong does not stand by itself. It is stand strong in the Lord. That's what we're talking about, is standing strong in him and how that is possible uh, in the world that we live today. So our focus for this series is on the armor of God. That's what this passage is about. As, as Paul closes his letter to the Ephesians Christ, Ephesian Christians in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20, 
he describes the armor of God, and he lays it out piece by piece. And we have been looking at this armor as it's, as it's laid out there piece by piece for us to look at. And the, this armor is given to us for the express purpose of helping us to stand strong in the Lord. It's the equipment that we need in order to be able to stand as he wants us to. So far, in review, this is what we've studied. We've studied the belt of truth that's supposed to be buckled around our waist. It is the truth, I believe, in a couple of ways. It is the truth of the Word of God, for sure. And it is me living out that truth of the Word of God to those around me and living a life of truthfulness, living a life of integrity. That is part of that belt of truth. So we buckle that on or around our waist. And then we have the breastplate of righteousness that is supposed to be firmly in place, protecting all of the vital organs in our lives. And that righteousness, again, the reminder there is it is God's righteousness. It's the righteousness of Christ, not my own, not any self-righteousness that I might have, the fact that I, you know, I hardly miss church on a Sunday. I have a pretty good track record at church attendance, you know. But that's not what that armor is about. That's, what, that's not the breastplate of pastor's righteousness. It's the breastplate of the righteousness of God that I wear and that you wear. And then we have the shoes of the gospel of peace. And those shoes, that our feet are fitted with those shoes. Those shoes of peace protect us, yes. But there's also something about being on our feet that there is movement. We are to spread that gospel around. We are to walk around and spread that gospel of peace to those around us. And then we have the shield of faith. And we talked about that shield of faith, and it was that full shield that basically was from head to toe that the soldiers would have in order to protect themselves from the fiery darts that would come, the arrows that were flaming. And they would come and they would lodge in those shields that were made of wood, and they were coated then with like an animal fur, and then they were uh, dampened so that those fiery darts would be extinguished. They were great protection against those fiery darts, which Paul kind of interprets for us as the temptations that, that Satan uh, sends our way. So we've, that's what we've looked at so far in the armor of God. Today we move on to cover the last two pieces of the armor. So I'd like you to join me in your Bible in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. So if you have your Bible this morning, wherever you might have it on your phone, on your tablet, or in printed form even, for those who still do that. Um, Ephesians 6, and we're looking down at verse uh, 17, basically, this morning, is we're going to find these two pieces of armor. And if you want to take some notes in your bulletin this morning, there's a spot at the bottom of the front page there where you can jot down some notes about where we're going this morning, and maybe they will be helpful for you later this week if you go over them. So we're looking at armor piece number five today as we kick things off. Armor piece number five is the helmet <clears throat> of salvation. And look with me at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, the first part of verse 17. Uh, Paul continues with uh, these items of armor, and he says, take the helmet of salvation. So when a soldier would suit up for battle, the helmet was often the last piece of armor to go on. It was the final act of readiness, if you will, in preparation for combat. So that piece of armor would then go on. And that helmet, of course, was vital for survival, protecting the brain, the command uh, station, if you will, for the rest of the body. If the head was badly damaged, the rest of the armor would be of little use, so they needed to put on that helmet of salvation. Just recently, the, the, the comedian Bob Sackett, his death uh, that was attributed to a head injury, it brings it around again to how vital it is to protect this part of our body. You know, we get this injured, we don't even maybe realize it, and it can be deadly. So that helmet was so important. And the helmet here is identified with salvation. It says the helmet of salvation. So salvation and, and the assurance of it are impenetrable defenses against anything that the enemy would throw at us. 
anything that would come our way. So as we prepare for Satan's attacks, we must grab that helmet of salvation and we must buckle it on tightly. Now, though salvation does happen at that point when you acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Savior, I believe that is true. That is when salvation takes place, when you uh, acknowledge Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So there's a point that many of us look to and say, I do remember the day I got saved. I do remember the time I got saved. Now, for some, you remember specifically. For some, you celebrate the day still when you accepted Christ as your Savior. For others, it's a more a general time frame. I, I remember back at this point or at that point where I accepted Jesus. So that is a point to come to and to remember when Jesus invaded your life and you uh, experienced his saving grace in your life. Salvation is that, yes. But I also believe um, that it shouldn't be just limited to this one-time act in the past that we just look back to or even to a future hope. Because of my salvation, one day I will be in, uh, in glory with the Lord. I believe that God's salvation, and especially here as it applies to this helmet, is an ongoing, eternal state that we as the uh, children, as his children, enjoy in the present. So even though I was saved, as many of you know, back about third grade, when I came to know Jesus and I tracked my salvation back to that point, I don't think it's really off what God's word would say to say, you know, I'm being saved every day. I come back to my salvation every day. Okay, that doesn't mean I've lost it and I have to grab a hold of it again. No, it just means that I realize that every day the Lord brings me salvation. Every day the Lord is, is bringing that on. That, that really fits this helmet piece because it's not like, well, you know, I put on the helmet of salvation back in the third grade, and there it was, and haven't touched it since. Okay, we, it's not that. It, it's realizing we have to have that daily, coming back to our salvation and establishing that each and every day, I think, is important. So it's an ongoing eternal state that we enjoy in the present. It's a daily protection and deliverance from our sin nature and Satan's schemes. So because of the power of the cross, our enemy no longer has any hold on us. And so we must learn to keep our helmets buckled so that Satan's fiery missiles do not lodge in our thoughts. And you know there are a lot of fiery missiles going on out there that would love to lodge up here because if they can take a hold up to here, they start working their way through the rest of our lives as well. Um, in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, it reminds us of this, and so this is a good verse to just jot down, and you can come back to it later. Uh, again, the Apostle Paul writing to the Corinthian church here, he says, for though we live in the world, and we do, we do not wage war as the world does. <clears throat> the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power, our weapons, the weapons of the Spirit, have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. And I love that last part of there, because that helps me during the day. I, I, I don't shut off the TV entirely. I do watch a little news. I, I do watch a little of this and a little of that. But as those thoughts come in, I do need to take them captive and say, is this something that is going to follow along with God and his word? Some of it is. Some of it isn't. And, and we toss it out. But it's that protection idea here that is so important, taking those thoughts captive. Now, there are several actions a believer can take to keep this helmet fastened and functioning. Because if, if we lose our helmet, it's not a good thing. So we need to keep it on uh, and have it on tightly. Here are some things that you might jot down that can help with this. Here's one of them to keep that helmet on. Renew our minds, to renew our minds. Our minds are battlefields, really. The outcomes of, of those battles determine the course of our lives. Look at what Paul tells the, the Roman Christians. <clears throat> You've probably heard this before. It's a great uh, section to put to memory in Romans chapter 12. 
He says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. And I tell you right now, the world is trying to push you into a mold and me into a mold all the time. It always has been. Always has been. And, and it's a fight to not be conformed to that. So it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. Okay, good. I want to be different. I want to be changed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect <clears throat> will. So we are to renew our minds by allowing the truth of God's word to wipe out that anything that is contrary to it, to you know, realize that that is not the way that I need to go. I need to follow what God's word is telling me. Old ideas, opinions, worldviews need to be replaced by what God teaches us in his word. We need to allow God's truth to continually wash away the world's lies and confusion from our minds and adopt God's perspective, to renew our minds. And so, like I say, and I've said it over and over again, even before our current cultural interestingness has happened, the idea that if you're watching, you know, this much news on the TV or radio or however you're getting it on your homepage, on your computer, you probably better equal or double that in the Word of God. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying to get perspective. I'm not saying that's all, the media is all bad. I'm just saying if you're going to be looking at this and taking some stuff in, which we do, then we also need to be taken up in what God has. We need to have our minds renewed by His Word and His Spirit. Here's the second one. Not just renewing your minds, but rejecting doubts. Often our doubts arise from our circumstances because we're sensory creatures. So what we cannot understand with our five senses, we tend to disregard. So if we allow them to, circumstances may convince us that God does not really love us or that his word is not true about our salvation. And we go through this all the time. We have stuff that happens in our life. They're bad things. And so because those are bad things, we think easily could think, well, God doesn't love me or he wouldn't let those bad things happen to me. And we know that really isn't the case. Sometimes we have some really hard things that happen in our life. Some really hard things that God uses in our lives in some amazing, amazing ways. But Satan would love us when something bad happens to say, yeah, God doesn't like me anymore. I'm probably not even saved, you know. And go on and on with doubts that can take over us. I believe it is normal and it's natural to have these doubts. And we need to look to God's word to help us deal with the doubts that come. We all have them from time to time. And it's good to talk about them. But you know, you have to be careful who you talk about them with, don't you? You might walk up to someone and say you doubted a little bit about God. And they might be like, oh, get away from me. Do you know what I mean? Because we should never doubt. Scripture doesn't say that. We do have doubts. I love how Jesus lovingly worked with Thomas, doubting Thomas. You know, when he came and he said, I want to see some proof. I want to see some proof that, that Jesus really did rise. I want to put my, my fingers, you know, in his wound. I want, to, I want to know it really happened. And Jesus lovingly allowed him to do that and helped him with his doubts. I believe God will help us with our doubts as well. And then we also need to remember that we can't know everything about God and his ways. You know, we can't know everything about God and his ways. We'd like to, but think about it. Do you really want to know everything about God? What kind of a God would we serve if we knew everything about him? You know, I love that I don't know a whole lot about God. We can know a good portion, of course, from his word, but we're not going to know everything. <clears throat> Leave room for the mystery. Leave room for the mystery. There are certain things that I will not understand. You will not understand. Why did God do that? Why is God working in this way? I don't know. But he is. And he's God. And we need to trust him regardless. And that's often where faith comes in, isn't it? Faith can aid in dispelling doubt. I am going to grab a hold of God and I'm going to trust in him even though I don't get what he's doing right now. God, I think I have a better plan for the world. 
<laughs> Ever feel like telling that to God? Well, you know, he's the one in charge. We need to come back to that. Leave room for the mystery. Here's another one that kind of fits that there. Retain an eternal perspective. This is all, again, about how we keep that helmet on, that helmet on our head and our mind. When life crashes in around us, we must remember to look up. Our salvation is the most precious gift that we have received, and keeping our eyes on that can help us to weather the storms of life, that we need to have an eternal perspective. Part of this is realizing that when what we see around us and what we deal with in this life are not all there is. Okay, so the things that I see happening in the world today, it's not all there is. And this life that we live, though we enjoy it, and we can have great joy and peace as we walk in this world and some of the beautiful things that God has created for us to enjoy, including one another, it's a great part of living in this world. But that's not all there is. There's so much more. Uh, that we, as we view eternity. So have that eternal perspective. Here's another one. Remember that victory is already accomplished. Victory is already accomplished. When we consider ourselves dead to sin but alive to God because of our salvation, we eliminate many of the opportunities that Satan uses to entrap us. Uh, be reminded of 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone. The new has come. That's a wonderful promise to, to grab a hold of, that he has made you and me a new creation. He hasn't just refurbished us. <clears throat> He's made us new from the inside out. And, and I love that. And because we are a new creation in Christ, that allows us to resist temptation and to not choose sin. Christ has won the victory. So, so remember that victory is already accomplished through Christ. And I think sometimes it's good to, to just even verbally say when you're tempted, you know, I don't have to go there. I'm not going there because God has already won the victory over that. I'm not going to enter into that argument. I'm not going to delve into that situation. I'm not going to go there. And I'm not going to be tempted to, to move into that area because God's already won the victory for me. And then the last point in that, in that little series there is realize that all our hope is in him. Our, all our hope is in him. I love how the psalmist puts it in Psalm 73, and I don't think I really read this over. I mean, I've read the Bible as you have too and read through this psalm before, but this really stuck out to me as I found it this week for this particular point. The psalmist said, Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. That's a good verse to stick on your mirror. That's a good verse to have in front of you as you walk through the day. Um, that's so important that our hope is in him. Our, our helmet is most effective when we treasure what it represents, and that's the salvation that Jesus purchased for us. And that salvation cannot share the place of importance in our hearts with earthly things. So in pleasing the Lord and hoping in him in our, is our supreme delight, we eliminate many of Satan's um, lures, and it renders his evil suggestions powerless. So as we wear this helmet of salvation every day, our minds become more insulated against the suggestions, the desires, and the traps the enemy lays for us. And we choose to guard our minds from excessive worldly influences and instead think on the things that honor Christ. So what are those things that honor Christ? We have a great listing of those in Philippians 4, 8. It tells us there what those things are that, that honor Christ. They are the things that are true. They are the things that, that are true are honorable, are just, are pure, are lovely, are commendable, are excellent, are worthy of praise. In thinking on these things and going that additional step of where you actually are living in these things, we wear our salvation as a protective element or a protective helmet uh, that will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus.
So take that helmet of salvation, put that helmet of salvation on and wear it for the Lord's glory. So my question this morning, have you, have you done that? Have you taken that step of faith to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you received his salvation into your life that was made available for you and me on the cross? I pray that you have. If you haven't, I really encourage you to consider coming to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, realizing that he died on the cross for you and for me, took away our sin and shame, and he asked that we simply believe. And, and grab a hold of that truth and confess our sins to him. If you have questions about that, I would love to talk with you and try to answer any questions you might have about uh, salvation and coming to know Jesus in that way. As, as we move forward now to our, the final piece of armor that's noted in this section, Paul uses the conjunction here, and, to connect the helmet of salvation to our next piece of armor, and that is this, armor piece number six, jot it down there on your paper, it is the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit. And we see that in, again in, in verse 17, the second half of verse 17 in Ephesians 6. So Paul says not only to take, um, to take the uh, helmet of salvation, but also to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So the sword here, this sword, is both an, an offensive and a defensive weapon used by soldiers or warriors. So it was used for both. And swords were used to protect oneself from harm as well as to attack the enemy. And in both cases, it was necessary for the soldier to get a little training on the proper use of the sword in order to be more effective or most effective in this defense and offense. And Christian soldiers, I think, also need to be trained. Just like the Roman soldiers were trained to use their sword, we need to be trained to use the sword as the word of God. And you'll notice that Paul does identify this sword in a couple of ways. He identifies the sword as belonging to the Holy Spirit, calls it the sword of the Spirit, and then he identifies it as being the Word of God, which is, is the Bible and God's Word to us. Now, so here are a couple of points that might help us to better be trained in the use of God's Word. So as we think of this sword of the Spirit that's both an offensive and a defensive weapon, we notice it's of the Spirit, it is the Word of God. So here's a couple of things that can help us in this. First of all, if, if we know the source of the Bible, knowing where the Bible came from can, can be a big help here. See, the Bible is given by God from the Holy Spirit, and, it, and it's written by men, but it's given by God. And that's what we're taught in 2, Corinthians, or excuse me, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, wonderful verse here about the inspiration and the authority of God's Word. All Scripture, it says, all Scripture is God-breathed, and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So all of God's word, I love the, the terminology there in this particular translation, that it's God-breathed. See, God gave that to us. He gave his word to us. So it's important to remember that the Bible comes from God. It is his word to us and it is extremely useful in all areas of life. So when we're talking about the sword of the Spirit, we're talking about this book, which is, yeah, an ancient book, very old book, yet it has the truth of God contained in it for your life and my life every single day. And so grab a hold of that fact that it is from God. The source of this book is from God himself. Here's another one that I think is helpful, is to understand the power of the Bible. God's word, used properly, is an effective defense against evil as well as an offensive weapon that we use to demolish strongholds of error and falsehood, like it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. So the idea of the power of the Bible comes out in another sword reference. There's another reference where we have the sword mentioned, and it's in Hebrews 4.12, and you've probably heard this before. For the word of God... God's Word, the Bible, it is living and active, 
sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. The Roman sword was commonly made in this, in this same manner. The fact that it had two edges made it easier to penetrate as well as to cut in any direction. And the idea is that of piercing or penetrating, the word of God reaches the heart or the very center and lays open the motives and feelings of those it touches. Have you ever had God's word penetrate your heart? I, I hope you have. I hope you have. It came in, and I mean, that's usually how we find out we need Jesus, isn't it? His word has told us that we're sinners and we're separated from God, and his word penetrates and tells us some of those things that are hard to hear, but they are important. And so as we understand the power of the Bible, it's an amazing, not only an offensive, but a defensive weapon against the enemy. And the last piece of trying to understand the Bible and so forth is to comprehend the purpose of the Bible, you know, why it was given. And God has given us his living, active word so that we can know him and learn how to walk with him. I do believe that's one of the, the main purposes of his word. As I read this word, as I read the words in this book, I learn about God. And I, and I learn about how he loves me and how he cares for me. And I learn about how to love him and follow after him. So I do lear I, I learn how I can know him better and how I can walk with him. And another main purpose of his word is to make us strong, that we can be able to withstand the evil onslaughts of Satan. And the Holy Spirit uses the power of the word to save souls and then to give them spiritual strength to be mature soldiers for the Lord so that they can stand strong. The more we know and understand the word, the more useful we will be in doing the will of God and the more effective we will be in standing against the devil. And that's why it's so important, you know, you always hear, spend time with God, talk to him in prayer, and read his word. The more we know about his word, it will touch our lives and it will help touch other lives as well. So that with these final two aspects or pieces of armor, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, we round out God's provision for a standing, strong life. Next week, we will bring our series to a close with a look at how prayer brings the pieces of armor together in a powerful way. As Paul finishes his talk about the armor of God, he's now lifted those pieces of armor for us, and then he brings it together with prayer. How does prayer help in this? We're going to find out next week. So as we complete our time this morning, I would like us to consider how important salvation and the word of God are to us as Christians. So I want us to close by simply giving thanks to the Lord for both of these pieces of armor that he has given us. So if you want, you can put your notes away now and close your Bible and just take a moment to focus in on the Lord as we close our time. So as we pray this morning, uh, just take a moment to consider in your life, first of all, your salvation. Can you think back to the time that you did accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, believing he died on the cross for you? Can you remember that? or at least close to the time that happened. Give the Lord praise for that day, that moment, that time when salvation, the salvation of God came to you. And then now let's thank him that every day he brings us salvation. Every day we need to live in the presence and the salvation of Jesus. It's not just something that we look to in the past and say, yeah, I did it. Yeah, I did it. But yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> Every day I'm living according to that plan of salvation that God has given to me. Thank him for your salvation today. And now let's get 
grateful and thankful for the Word of God, the Bible, that we all have probably many copies of in different translations. Even on our phones, we probably have two or three renditions of God's Word. To just be grateful for His Word, that we have it in abundance in our nation, many do not. And then to be grateful that we, we can read this Word in our own language, and we can understand God's words and his ideas to us that can change our lives every day. So, Father, this morning, we are grateful for the helmet of our salvation. We are grateful that we can place it on and strap it on tightly every single day and have our minds protected from the onslaught of so much that coming at us today. And then we thank you, Lord, that you've given us your word to study and to grow in and to learn by, that we might truly be those, those Christian soldiers for you, those ones who are standing strong for your glory in our world today. Lord, we love you. We praise you for this opportunity of worship today, and we ask as we go forth into the week ahead that we would continue to place this powerful armor on every day and go forth to stand strong in you. For we ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we go forth today again, just a reminder, we would like to sign that, uh, that map that's going to go in the picture frame for, for Travis and that hopefully maybe it's been taken over or someone will take it over to the fellowship hall and just put it on a table over there. So you can come around and, and just a little, a short little note and sign your name to that. We want it all filled up with signatures from, from uh, Sunshine's church family here at Camp Creek to encourage him. So that will be happening. Also, we're looking forward to starting up some more small groups. Several of you already signed up that you are interested in maybe hosting a group or helping to facilitate a group. If you didn't get to sign up, that is in the back of the church. You can just sign your name on that. Next Sunday after church, we're going to have a quick little meeting about it, but I'll get with those of you that signed up. So if you put your contact information down, I'm excited about our Lent series, the power of the gospel, and how we're going to look at that together in some of our small groups. So if you have any questions about that, please talk to me. We're also excited, as you think of Lent, we're thinking of Easter Sunday and celebrating with our, our Easter choir. So there's a note in the bulletin about that. It's going to be starting up here pretty soon, but we can get the books and the listening CDs to you earlier. I'd say you see Linda, and if you just, Linda right there, talk to her about that. We're excited about some things happening for choir for the Easter season. So God is good all the time. All the time. Will you stand with me as we go forth today and receive this simple blessing as we go off into the week ahead? I pray that you will go forth today standing strong with that helmet of salvation and that sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. May they protect you and sustain you all week long. God bless your week. <laughs>